Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation. What kind of equation are we dealing with? Trigonometric, exponential, both, something like this. So we have 2 to the power sine squared x plus 2 to the power cosine squared x is equal to 3. These types of questions are fairly common. You've probably seen them somewhere else with the same number or different numbers. They're, you know, competition level problems or maybe some Olympiad level problems, but they're fairly easy to solve. Anyways. So, we're going to take advantage of the Pythagorean identity for trigonometric functions. And this is what it is. If you ask me what is the most important identity in trigonometry, I think pretty much everyone would give you the same equation. So, it is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. You know that they're related by this identity. For any x value, obviously, it doesn't matter which quadrant it is how big or how small, how, how small it is. Awesome. So from here, I can go ahead and isolate sine squared. And sine squared can be written as 1 minus cosine squared. So this is what I would like to use. I'm going to substitute this into my equation. And that is going to simplify uh, the equation. Let's go ahead and do that. So we get 2 to the power 1 minus cosine squared x plus 2 to the power cosine squared x is equal to 3. Obviously, similarly, you could also isolate cosine squared and replace it with 1 minus sine squared. And it, it would give you, give you pretty much the same thing. You would get the exact same solutions, but you would be solving a sine equation as opposed to a cosine equation. That would be the only difference. All righty? Okay, great. So now, we can go ahead and write the 2 to the power 1 minus cosine squared as 2 divided by 2 to the power cosine squared x. And this is just as is, same one. And now notice that 2 to the power cosine squared x is repeating. So I can basically use substitution here. Let's go ahead and replace this with y. And hopefully you know why we're doing this. 2 over y plus y is equal to 3. Now we know that y cannot equal 0 because 2 to the power something can never equal 0. And in this equation, obviously, y equals 0 would not satisfy the equation. So we can multiply both sides by y, and that's going to give us 2 plus y squared equals 3y. It's better than making a common denominator, even though it's the same thing. Now we can go ahead and turn this into a quadratic, which is fairly easy to solve. And as you know, this is factorable. So I can just write it as y minus 1 times y minus 2. And then uh, this gives us two solutions for y. And they're both valid, as you will see in a little bit. So first solution, y equals 1. Remember, y is 2 to the power cosine squared x. So let's go ahead and set it equal to 2 to the power cosine squared x. Now 2 to the power something equals 1. That implies that the exponent is 0. So from here we get cosine squared x equals 0, which implies cosine x equals 0. Because if something squared is 0, it has to be 0. Great. Now, from here what do we get, right? When cosine x is equal to 0, if you think about the unit circle, unit circle tells us that, okay, cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And of course, it's just going to keep rotating. So it also means that we're basically dealing with odd powers of pi over 2, which we can write as 2n minus 1 multiplied by power two, pi over 2, where uh, n is, you know, a positive integer. It could also be a negative, but, you know, it's just an integer anyways. Okay, the second solution comes from y equals 2. If you set that equal to 2 to the power cosine squared x, from here you get cosine squared x equals 1. But this gives you two solutions, either cosine x is equal to 1, or cosine x is equal to negative 1. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and solve each of these equations separately. If cosine x is equal to 1, that means you're dealing with 0 plus, of course, multiples of 2 pi. So we can write the solutions as 2k pi. And for this one, it's basically odd multiples of pi over 2 because pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 is going to, uh, I'm sorry, not 3 pi over 2. Uh, for cosine to be negative 1, you're basically dealing with uh, the uh, pi, uh, and uh, 2 pi is not going to work, so we're basically dealing with pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, so odd powers of pi 
is going to work for this equation. So we can write it as 2m minus 1 times pi. I'm trying to be careful uh, using different uh, variables for the integer values because they don't have to be the same. Okay, great. So this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.